In this video, we're going to look at how to create a switchboard. Database designers often forget that they are not the person going to be adding data and using the database. Um, and that person who is entering data perhaps doesn't know much about databases at all. So when they see all these different tables and queries, it can be really quite daunting for them. So we can create a switchboard to help them navigate their way around. So they only need to see the objects that they need to see. We do this on the tools menu and drop down to database utilities. And while I'm here, I'll just mention it's useful to quite regularly compact and repair the database, which just um, checks that the database is running smoothly and hasn't got any unnecessary wasted space there can make a big difference to the file size. And then we have back up a database. Really, that's very important. I like to back up the database on a daily basis. Remember, data does not need to be saved in a database, so it's very easy to make lasting damage, make regular backups. OK, so the bit we want then is a switchboard manager. I get this message because we don't already have a switchboard available. When I come back into this system to, to edit the switchboard, it won't ask me this question again. So do we want to create one? Yes. OK, here's our switchboard. It's created a default one for us, but we can add more switchboards to it, sub switchboards, if you will. So I'm going to immediately add a new switchboard. I need to create one. So I'm going to click New, and this is going to be called Forms Switchboard. So that any user, when they open up the database, will see the main switchboard, and will also see on the main switchboard a button that will take them to the Forms Switchboard. It's a sub-switchboard. OK, so we've got two switchboards created. We need to edit the main switchboard now so that we can see the sub switchboard on it. So make sure you've got main switchboard selected and then go to edit. We're now editing the main switchboard. And we basically place items on it by clicking on the new button. I want to put on this, and this is just the text to display. Let's call this um, use forms switchboard i won't worry too much about my spelling the command we want to do when they click on that button is to go to a switchboard but which switchboard well the forms switchboard so that's the text when they click on the button it'll go to a switchboard which one this one I also want to add another item to this main switchboard, so I'll click on New. And this time I want to exit the database. So the command for this is not go to a switchboard, but exit the application. And then OK. So I've edited my main switchboard, and it should have two items on it. So I'll close this down now, which takes us back to the main switchboard manager. And before I show you how this works, I just want to add something to the forms switchboard, this sub switchboard. So I need to edit the sub switchboard and put a new item on the forms switchboard that will simply return to main switchboard. If you don't put a button to return to the main switchboard, then the user can get locked in with nowhere to go. So I want to go that want that to go to the main switchboard and OK. So we can close down the editing and close down the switchboard manager. Two objects have now been created for us. One is a table called switchboard items which details all the information that we've put on the switchboard. And the other is a form. And the form is called switchboard, which if I double click to open it, shows you the switchboard. So this is how the, 
the user would use the switchboard. You place items on the switchboard just to allow them to use certain things. So when they want to go to the forms switchboard, they can click on the button and it takes us to the forms switchboard. We can then click on the button to return to the main switchboard. Or we can exit the database totally. So we'll look at making this a little bit more useful now. Let's go back to the switchboard manager. Database utilities, switchboard manager. I'm happy with the main switchboard, but let's add some more information to the form switchboard. So we need to edit the forms switchboard. And we'll just go through and add, by clicking new, each of the forms that we've got. So we've got a range of options that we can do for the command. Um, when we open a form, we can open it just in add mode, so users can just add new records. Or we can put it in edit mode so they can see previous records as well. I'm going to leave mine in edit mode. Choose which form to open, customer details, and then change the text appropriately. Oops, we'll get there. Customer details. Click on OK. That's now been added to the list of items on the switchboard. We'll add another one. And this can go again, form in edit mode. This time will be the order details, and we'll put that in. So I'm just going to build these up. So I've added the rest of those forms. So we can close down the editing and have a look at what the switchboard looks like now. So there's the main switchboard. If a user wants to use the forms, and there's all the forms that are available for them to use. In a nice, simple and easy fashion. And this doesn't just have to be forms, it can be queries, it can be um, macros, it can be all kinds of things. So any objects basically that the uh, database has. So the idea is going to be when the user opens the database, instead of being confronted with these, they'll be confronted with the main switchboard. But we don't want them to have to go and find the switchboard for themselves. So there's a way of automating that. And we do that by using tools and drop down to start up because we're going to affect the way the access database starts up. Not going to worry about too much of what's on here, but it's to display the form page. We can display any form at startup, but the most useful one is the switchboard. You can also choose whether or not to display the database window. This is the database window with all the tables and things on, so you could hide that so users can't see it. Whether or not to put the display status bar on. So there's a few options there for you to have a look around at, but the main thing is the switchboard and then OK. If I now close this database and reopen it, you can see immediately the user is presented with just the switchboard to navigate with. They don't have to worry about all those tables and queries. And of course, because I selected to so not show the database window, it's not even there. So they can't get lost at all. So that's switchboards created on tools and switchboard manager, and then making it run automatically on tools and startup. To me, switchboards are probably one of the most useful features of a database.